Hello, I'm Dr Karen Horridge and I'm a consultant paediatrician here in Sunderland and I provide healthcare for disabled children and young people from 0 to 19 and that includes children and young people of all ages with a learning disability. So what does a paediatrician do when we provide healthcare for children and young people with a learning disability? Well, children and young people with learning disabilities have very many different health needs. And I've done some work looking at the needs of the children and young people that uh, I look after um, to get, come up with what are some of the commonest health conditions that we provide health care for. So on the slides you'll see the percentages of the children and young people that we see in our clinics with different types of health need to give an example of some of the things that can occur alongside a learning disability. So things like constipation, and there's a separate section in the resource about that. The epilepsies, again, there's a separate section about that. Chromosomal and genetic conditions are quite commonly associated with a learning disability. And it's important to know about those because there may be clues then to other health conditions to look out for uh, to try and keep the person as healthy as possible and there may be implications for other members of the family so knowing about chromosomal and genetic conditions is really important. Drooling is something that affects people, some people with a learned disability and we can treat and help that so it's important to identify that. Also gastroesophageal reflux where you get acid coming up and that can be really quite painful and again really important for us medics to identify that and to address it. There can then be problems with pain in the muscles or the skeletal system and problems in the way the person is walking called their gait. There may be issues with being too heavy and that's called obesity and again that brings extra health risks so it's important for us to identify it because there is help available and support. There's then a whole raft of uh, difficulties that can occur around emotions and behaviours and again these are really important to identify because there are specialist teams that can offer positive behavioural support and approaches to help the child or young person with their emotions, their anxieties, their behaviours, their autism spectrum uh, conditions and so forth. There can be difficulties with speech or language and also with eyesight and again all of these needs are important to be identified as part of the overarching care plan so that it can all be addressed. Things that families might have to manage for the child or young person, things like bowel incontinence and urinary incontinence or bedwetting. Some children and young people with a learned disability need to be fed by tube or they need care all the way around the clock. So it's important to know about uh, the range of needs. Sometimes families tell us there are issues within their family. So they might have more than one child with a learning disability or they might be caring for another family member. Or there may have been family breakdown, putting extra stresses on the remaining family members. There may be issues at school that are brought to us as paediatricians to try and help advocate about because we want children with a learning disability to have all their needs correctly identified as early as possible and to be included as fully so that they can participate in learning and all the activities they want to do. We want families to have the information that they need and to be well supported. So I've done this graph to show that most children who come to a general paediatric clinic are going to be coming along just with one need. So it may be their asthma or their constipation. They come along, they get seen and then off they go. Whereas when young people and children with learning disabilities come to the clinic, they have very many uh, needs and the graph looks very different in terms of the number of needs across the bottom uh, that they come along with. So some children and young people have more than 30 or 35 extra different needs and each one needs to be carefully identified so that we can address that within the care plan. 
This graph is quite complicated, but if you look at the detail, it shows the difference in needs between children and young people with a learning disability and those without a learning disability, uh, all together in the same place. So these again are a profile of the different types of needs that might occur for children and young people who have a learning disability. I think it's really important for families to know of the sorts of health needs that might arise so that they can ask the right questions when they go to see their doctor and make sure that all the bases have been covered, that everything can be identified early, prevented where possible, treated promptly with the best possible outcomes. Thank you for listening.